Hi, I'm here at CES 2018 at the AMD booth with James Pryor. Thank you so much for talking to oh, me. You're welcome. So I just saw a presentation on the new stuff that's coming from AMD Desktop here in 2018. But first, I'd like to talk a bit about 2017. So 2017, I think, was a very successful year for AMD. Uh, could you talk a little bit more about how you feel that went? Uh, it was a very, very, uh, very, very good year. I can't, uh, so positive, there's so much good things we did, all the product launches, all the media coverage, all the sales success. I'm very, very pleased to have been part of that Whereas a return for AMD into the high-end desktop, launching Threadripper, launching Ryzen, seeing the positive comments from everybody on the social media, different forums from the journalists and everything else. It's all been very, very good. We're really excited about what can we do and take that to the next level in 2018. Mm -hmm. If there's something you think you could have done differently in the initial launch or in any of these launches this year, what do you think it would be? Oh, that's hard to say. There's always there's always little things that you want to improve upon. Um, we'd have loved to have launched with uh, all the performance tuning for memory already in the bag and done, uh, but no one was telling us, you know, go slower, I'll wait a little bit longer. They were saying, no, let's go, let's come on, hurry. So we, ha we had to do that in the public eye a little bit, and that was... Not optimal, but we did it, and it, it shows our commitment to making the platform better all the time. So I think now that we've got into uh, a, a routine of delivering platform improvements, everybody expects to see us come back with you know, firmware updates, with product updates, with software updates. And that's good, because that's what we want to do. We want to keep a focus on every area of the platform, whether it's game developer engagement, or application development up updates, or whether it's our own products, or whether it's something that the, our partners can do in the motherboards, then you know, all of that stuff, we just want to keep pushing and progressing. Uh, is there any one of the releases that is your favorite? Oh, Threadripper by far. <laughs> that was a monster, that was so much fun. Um, and, you know, mostly because uh, I'm the product manager for Threadripper and also because you know that was I was part of that special core team that came up with it and worked on it in our spare time because um, it wasn't originally on the roadmap it was uh, we saw an opportunity a few core guys of us and we took it to Jim Anderson and he, he's such a passionate guy and he loves CPUs he's like yes we have to do this so we made it happen and even though it was you know came came from nowhere and it has been a massive success we're so pleased with the reception and how it's going so that that was a truly fun moment I'm actually glad you brought that up so I did see in an article earlier this year, right after Threadripper was announced, that it was made in your spare time. Um, what kind of time frame did you have for making it? Like when did it start? When did you start thinking about it? When did it start becoming a serious project at AMD? So probably we got the green light from Jim to formally approve it about a year before launch, um, and we were in super secret mode for you know a good seven eight months before we really took it outside. This was a very tight core team. Um, and before we took it to, to Jim, it was probably maybe a year as well. So there was a year of evenings and weekends of just a few core guys. So, and it was a global effort, right? It wasn't two, three guys in one office. You know, there was a guys in Austin, guys in India, guys in uh, our uh, San, Diego, San Jose office as well. Just everybody was working on it, trying to, because we all saw the opportunity and we were passionate because we were all enthusiasts and we wanted, wanted to make something, you know, we see where Ryzen was going and we saw where Epic was going, we saw the opportunity and then we like, man, we could, we could really do something there. Mm -hmm. So we hit that hard and it really paid off well. So what made you look at what you were already doing and what made you find that middle ground? Uh, I think it was probably as we found out more about Zencore, right? You can design something and you've got boundaries of where you think the performance is going to be and then where we soon because we were initially was AMD was saying we're going to increase performance by 40 percent clock for clock versus our previous generation and when we started getting the hints that it wasn't 40 it was actually 52 that makes you start going well this this changes where we could go with this this is you know it really you know you want to make the most of what engineering are giving to you and that was really where we saw the opportunity so you know, we knew we knew we wanted to come back. We knew we wanted to hit every market. So that meant that by adding this Threadripper product, we could do mainstream desktop, enthusiast desktop, high-end desktop, and server, plus high-end graphics, all in one year, and mobile graphics as well as mobile uh, notebooks as well, all in one year. That's a massive change. That's a massive undertaking. If we'd done any one of those products by themselves in 2017, it would be newsworthy. But doing all of them at once. It was fantastic. Um, it was this true testament to the ability of AMD to execute. 
to create a plan and then deliver on it. And that, that was really what drove us to do that, is you know, being able to show off and strut our stuff a little bit on our ability to deliver. And I think you did deliver. <laughs> yeah. So moving to uh, future products, uh, let's start with the new desktop APUs. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people were kind of expecting those towards mid to late summer, around the time that Vega itself launched and that Threadripper launched, but we didn't get it in the notebooks until November, December, and until and in desktop until now. Is there any reason where there are delays, or were people just not really getting the right idea? Yeah, that was just you know people set their own expectations. It's we we're on the schedule we'd always been on. We knew that we were going to target 14 nanometer with the first Ryzen CPUs, and then we we're going to target 14 nanometer plus for the uh, Raven Ridge, the, the new desktop um, Ryzen processor and the mobile Ryzen processor. So we knew where that timing was, we were aligned to that, we, we, it's been pretty consistent. And you know, from the, from the outside, from the consumer point of view, it feels like a long time between the two. From an engineering perspective, that was back to back. Right, that's very fast cadence to get a full line of desktop CPUs into market from March through to July and then start delivering mobile uh, notebooks by September, October, November time frame. That is very fast. So we don't feel like we were delayed or held back anything. We went fast. Um, we moved um, as fast as appropriate trying to make sure everything was working as best as it can be and we're, we're keeping, the, keeping on that pace. So there are no delays, definitely pushing the, uh, as hard as we could. Okay. So I've noticed, especially in the naming scheme, these new APUs are the 2000 series. Yes. And you guys have um, come out and said very openly that you believe that this is the second generation Ryzen mm -hmm. CPU um, with all the improvements you've made. Are those the same improvements that we're going to see in the new 2000 series desktop CPUs in April? Or is that even potentially a third generation, so to speak? No, they're all desktop 2000 series. The, the, the improvements to the boost algorithm, the improvements in the silicon level for the memory latency and cache latency, and the improvements to the efficiency where we're uh, using lower voltages for uh, the same frequency, all of that is common between those two products. So that's why they're the 2000 series. If you look at how they perform and how they deliver that performance, they're, they're very similar in that respect, so that's why they're lined up to being the 2000 series together. Mm -hmm. So then if they're essentially, in terms of CPU at least, the same technology, why are, we, or why are you waiting until April for a release instead of <coughs> releasing it sooner? April feels about the right time, um, just due to the market cadence, due to our product school schedule, and also our back-end resources, the engineering and test that we have. Um, it is a different set of silicon, right? So we're, we're updating, we're moving again to a new global process. We've got 12 nanometer for the CPUs in April, so there is more work to be done for performance tuning and optimization and tweaking that happens after we get done with the desktop APUs. So um, it's, no, it's not a matter of picking a date and saying, yeah, we'll push it out and lay it out. It's, it's really based on the engineering readiness. Mm -hmm. And it also, um, I believe you mentioned that you were already sampling out CPUs to motherboard manufacturers and whatnot, even this far ahead? Yeah, we've got some early samples going out to uh, key partners. They're not full performance or uh, you know, the final shipping product, but we're starting that engineering effort, trying to get those engagement going along so we can get all the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> get all the great design wins, get them into the gaming towers, get them into the PCs that people want to buy, as well as enabling our DIY ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So it definitely seems like it's the opposite of last year. You're not rushing anything. You're trying to take all the time you need to make sure you deliver the best product you can. Yeah, very much. Very much focusing on the best product at the right time. Mm -hmm. Now, without giving too much away, because obviously you haven't disclosed any SKUs or anything for the 2000 series other than those two APUs, uh, what kind of improvements other than your um, <coughs> boost algorithms and whatnot can we see in the 2000 series desktop CPUs? Um, <coughs> excuse me, yeah. Those are, those are pretty much the, the main benefits. You can see improved performance, improved efficiency. We've got some, uh, some nice uh, workload improvements you're going to see. We're really focused on uh, improving our gaming performance and our real-world application performance, not the synthetics. 
So that's where our product definition is really going to help us focus on improving those experiences, so getting the higher frames per second, the smoother gaming, the faster transcodes and encodes, and the other things like that. So you know, the method by which we deliver that is, as I said, the updates to Precision Boost and you know the Boost algorithm, but that's the fundamentals of what we're doing. Okay. Now, second generation Threadripper, I'm not sure if you mentioned it in your presentation earlier today, um, but it has been said that it's coming later this summer, so about a year after the Threadripper 1 release. Is that also the same 2000 series, the same generation cores, just with the same sort of Threadripper DNA in it? Yeah, in the back half of the year we'll update Threadripper with the 12 nanometer uh, bits inside of it. It's going to be a fun new product there, and we'll see how that pans out later. Mm -hmm. Uh, so thinking even more uh, longer term into the future, uh, you're saying that you're going to support the AM4 platform until at least 2020. Yes. What happens after that? Uh, after that really hasn't been decided. The, the reason why we're saying 2020 is that's kind of our, our view into the future of seeing the same commonality of technologies, right? So first, you know, the connectivity for discrete cards, the connectivity for memory technologies, those are all going to be very, very uh, similar throughout that time frame. And we really don't want to change the socket until there's a driving need, right? That there's a new technology in memory or in uh, connectivity that's going to force us to have to redo things. So that's 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 current roadmap of what we see, and I don't think that that's going to change in the next year or two. Okay. So you're trying to give yourself enough time to make sure that you're still supporting all your products and people have a clear upgrade path without necessarily repeating what you've done previously and being uh, significantly behind in, as you said, memory controllers and gra uh, discrete graphics controllers. Yes? Exactly right. We want to make sure we're maintaining the, the cutting edge of I.O. and expandability, but also not falling off the curve. Okay. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I think we've got a lot of interesting information, and I look forward to a great 2018 from AMD. Thank you very much. If you guys like this video, don't forget to leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe to see all my CES 2018 coverage. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.